Hey, Cottonwood Young Adults, CYA. It's really good to be with you for a few minutes. If we haven't met, my name is Garrett, and I serve as one of the pastors at Cottonwood, and I specifically oversee our Cottonwood College. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, visit our website, cottonwoodcollege.org. We are enrolling all the time, and so uh, you might want to look into it. It could be a good next step for you, but I've got something that I want to share with you, something that's on my heart. I'm excited to be a part of this series that you guys are in right now called A Word in Season. I'm hoping that I've got a bit of a word in season for you, but this is what I want to do. Instead of sort of preaching a sermon to you, I'd like to just talk with you and have a conversation with you and really just give you some advice as a young adult. And it's advice that I actually wish I would have gotten and if I wouldn't have I would have gotten it earlier than I think I did, I think it would have had an effect on my young adulthood, if you will. Uh, who knows if I would have listened at age 18, 19, or 20, but I'm hoping you will listen regardless of your age. But yeah, I just want to share it with you, and I think it'll encourage you. It might challenge you a little bit, but in a good way. I want to read a couple passages to you to start, a couple scriptures to sort of get the conversation going and get your mind set on the subject that I want to talk to you about. Uh, two passages, one from Ephesians chapter 5 and one from 1 Peter chapter 5. In Ephesians chapter 5, it says this in verses 15 to 17. It says, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. There, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is is. Paul says there to the Ephesian church, make the best use of your time. Make the best use of your time. Book that in your mind while I read you this other verse from 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, he, Peter says this, be sober-minded, be watchful, because your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's probably a verse you've heard before. But Peter says, be sober-minded and be watchful, or some translations say, be vigilant. So make the best use of your time and be watchful or vigilant with your life if you put those two passages together. And what I want to do is take those two ideas, make the best use of your time, and be watchful and vigilant over your life, and I want to equate them to one idea that I will simply call living intentionally. And that's the advice I want to give you for the next few minutes. I want to advise you, <laughs> whether you ask for it or not, to live your life intentionally. I actually think that God would have you live your life intentionally. I believe that it's important that you live your life intentionally. I think from God's perspective, it seems that there's a lot at stake as it relates to whether or not you're living your life intentionally. And I want to unpack and maybe further define what I mean by, or what we mean by living your life intentionally. What exactly does that equate to? Well, by and large, what can happen in our 20s is, or in, in young adulthood, if you're 30-ish, is that life and time and circumstances can just sort of happen to us. And we just float along and sort of roll with whatever comes our way. And there's some value and there's some truth in that and there's some good about sort of rolling with the punches of life right? But if we just always just let life happen to us and never do anything intentionally, we will not necessarily find ourselves in the perfect will of God for our lives. Or maybe better stated, it will be more difficult 
to obey God in the way that we're seeking to obey God as Christ followers. So here's a few things to keep in mind. And I'm just going to get as real as I can with you and as practical as I can with you. So sharing those verses was probably the most spiritual that this will get. Okay? So I'm just going to get real, share a few things with you. Okay? And the first one is this. When we're talking about living intentionally, we're not talking about control. We're talking about stewardship. Not control, but stewardship. So we need to realize that living intentionally does not equate to trying to, to seek to control every outcome or circumstance of our lives, right? Like, that's not even possible. Like, 2020 came at the world, came at you, came at me, and just got, like, dumped on us like a ton of bricks from a dump truck. It was like, bam, pandemic. Bam, social political unrest. Bam, economic crisis. Deal with it. Live in quarantine. Be alone. Feel disconnected. All the things that just sort of hit us like a pile of rubble, right? And no amount of intentional living could have stopped 2020 from happening. It couldn't have. So we're not delusional here. We're not talking about control, but we are talking about stewardship because... Although 2020 could not have been stopped by anyone's intentional living, it could have helped 2020 suck a little less, if you want to put it that way, had some people been living a little bit more intentionally prior to all of this sort of happening. So let, let me give you an example. Barna Research Group in a recent study this year showed that Actually, during the pandemic, one out of three, one out of three practicing Christians has stopped engaging with church altogether. They haven't just done it a little bit less frequently. They haven't just, you know, gone from three times uh, church attendance to one time tuning in online. They've just squashed the whole thing. And I don't know what all their reasons are. Are, but you can definitely equate that to a slipping out of faith in God, a slipping out of relationship with God. But I would beg the question, and I would wonder how many of those 34%, which is the percentage of Christians that have stopped engaging church altogether prior to the pandemic, how many of those 34% had been intentionally developing a daily devotional time with God where they were cultivating their relationship with God. Because I guarantee you if all 34% had been doing that pre-pandemic, that percentage of how many are less engaged with church and their faith would actually be far less. But they would have had to have been living intentionally beforehand. So when we're talking about living intentionally, we're not talking about control. We're not talking about trying to align every circumstances, all the circumstances of our life perfectly. You'll never be able to do that. It'll be like grasping at the wind. But what we do need to understand and what we are saying when it comes to stewardship is that what you are doing now will help you with unforeseen circumstances that come your way. Or what I should say is that what you are doing now intentionally, by design, by your design... And we're talking about God's design in a minute, but by your design, because you have the power of choice, God's given you the power of choice, he's given you the power to wake up tomorrow and decide what you will do. He hasn't given me that power over your life, he's given you that power over your life. And so what you do intentionally now sets you up for what will happen with, when an unforeseen circumstance like a pandemic hits you. Life can either happen to us over and over again, or we can live intentionally and prepare ourselves for what might come. Not control, but stewardship. Number two is this. My advice to you. Do things on purpose to continually discover your God-given purpose. Do things on purpose 
to, di- to continually discover your God-given purpose. This is part of living intentionally as a Christian. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes we can think that God is going to show up on a magic carpet and whisp us away to a whole new world like in Aladdin. Remember that? Do you trust me? (laughs) We could be waiting for the magic carpet ride to sort of carry us away into a whole new world of purpose and fulfillment and we just have to sort of grab a pillow, lay back on the magic carpet ride and take a nap and we will arrive there when the time is right. And in reality though, what God has always wanted in, in the biblical story, what's been revealed in God's word is, word is that what he has always wanted is a true partnership with you and I, a true partnership and relationship with human beings, which means it's not one-sided and there's no magic carpet ride getting ready to sweep us up and carry us away. It means that he wants us to do something in this partnership relationship with him. He wants us to make decisions. He wants us to think critically. He wants us to think creatively. He wants us to take action. And as we begin to do things intentionally, He will lead us and guide us along the way. He will teach us to live in step with His will, but we have to do something. And taking action often leads us to understanding more clearly what His purposes are for our lives. This can mean for you as a young adult, what this can mean is experimenting with different things because you could do that as a young adult. Can I get an amen? I'm married, I have two kids, and I have recently acquired a mortgage payment. I'm not going to do a lot of experimenting at the age that I'm at right now, but you can do it. And in my 20s, when I was single, I went on missions trips. I worked several different kinds of jobs. I went to Bible college. I hung out with all kinds of different types of people. I tried new things. I had adventures. And not all, not all, but many of those things I started to do intentionally, not by accident. And I didn't start doing that till my late 20s. And I wish I would have started earlier. Now, you could be spontaneous. You could do things on the fly, but just... Don't let your entire life just sort of happen to you. Start to decide ahead of time to plan and do things intentionally that stir up growth in you, that position you to be challenged and stretched by God, that open your mind and heart to new horizons in life, new horizons maybe in ministry or or vocationally. Now's the time to intentionally make choices to steward your life in a different way, and to do things on purpose that will help you discover your God-given purpose. Because not all of your God-given purpose will be discovered by accident. The Holy Spirit whispers things to us, reveals things to us, maybe has someone speak into our life, but often there are intentional things that we need to do on purpose, not by accident, that help us get clarity. One of the best things that I decided to do intentionally as a young adult, was I decided that I was going to start to make friends with people who were different than me. Go figure. Often we gravitate towards everybody that looks just like us, acts just like us, talks just like us, agrees with everything we say, comes from our same socioeconomic background, same cultural background, because that's who we're comfortable with, that's who gets us, that's who will never disagree with us. Therefore, we never get challenged, we never have our horizons broadened, we never get well-rounded. And I'm telling you, friend, if you can't do anything, if you can't think of anything else to do on purpose, I want to challenge you to start to build some relationships with people who are different than you. Maybe some people who sometimes rub you a little bit the wrong way. Be careful with that. I'm not trying to get you to hang out with just people you don't like, but get around people who are different than you. Different outlooks, different perspective, come from a different background, think about life in a different way, think about culture in a different way, think about the church in a different way. You need people of like faith for sure, but pick people, pick some people of like faith that are different than you. You don't have to give up your friends that you 
that get you, that have similarities with you. I'm not saying that. Relax. Calm down. Stop yelling at me. (laughs) But build some friendships with people who are different than you and let them challenge you. I'm telling you, if you do this, you can discover more of your purpose, even your God-given purpose. God wants to shape you. And he does that as you intentionally position yourself to be shaped by him. Do things on purpose to discover, continually discover God's purpose for you. Number three, and the last thing is this. Think about time differently. What we often do with time when we're young adults is we just sort of let it come at us and pass us by. It's just like, gone. And we're like, what just happened? Maybe we'll reflect on it a little bit, but hey, there went that wave of life. Here comes the next wave. But I want to start, I want to challenge you to start thinking about time differently, more intentionally. In fact, I want to challenge you to view it My advice to you is to challenge you to view it as a precious commodity in a similar way that you might view your money. You probably have heard of Dave Ramsey, the Christian money guru. Don't worry, I'm not going to give you a whole Dave Ramsey rant right now. But Dave Ramsey has a saying about money. He says, we need to tell every penny where to go. Tell every penny where to go. In other words, uh, no cent in your budget financially goes unaccounted for. Take that same principle and start to think about your time this way. What if you were to tell every minute in the day where to go? Or make sure that every minute was was accounted for? I mean... If you were to go into a normal day, not plan anything, or just plan as you normally would right now, and then make a list at the end of the day of how you used every minute, I would venture to say that most of us would be shocked at how much time, how much time we waste in a day. I didn't fully realize this till I had kids, because I find myself squeezing out of a day more opportunities to get things done, spend time with God, so on and so forth, than I ever thought was possible. Because now my time is stretched thin, much more thin than it was when I was your age or in your season of life, maybe. But think about time as a precious commodity. This doesn't mean that you can't have fun. It doesn't mean that every minute needs to be filled with work or that you can't rest, right? What it means is don't let the hours, don't let the days, don't let the weeks slip away without asking God how he would have you use your time. Think of your time as a precious commodity. Budget your time. You're going to be watching this message probably on a Friday night. So As you go into the weekend, I want to challenge you when Sunday afternoon, Sunday night comes around, take a half hour and plan out your week. What will you do with each day? Some of you may already do this, but get even more intentional and start to insert the things intentionally into your time that are going to add value to your life and help you grow, like spending time with God, spending time with people of like faith, having intentional conversations, getting around people, uh, building friendships with people who are different than you, as I already mentioned, developing a skill, researching, studying, whatever, whatever it is that you feel is important at this time. I mean, you've got to sort of inventory your life when you start to budget your time. And I think that's part of the process of creating a budget for money, right? You... Start, okay, how much money am I spending on groceries? How much money am I spending on gas? How much money am I spending on entertainment? And you first start to analyze where you're using your money before you start telling your money where to go. And the same it is with time. Start analyzing how you're using your time and then start telling your time where to go or how to work for you or how to be budgeted in a way that will serve 
God's purposes for your life and your purposes for your life as you partner with God, as he speaks to your heart, as he reveals himself to you, as you do or seek to do what you know to do as a Christ follower. Look, I could go a lot further with the whole budgeting of time thing, but the point is this. Your time is a precious commodity. We read the verse earlier, redeem the time. If the enemy of your soul can't do anything to get you to sort of wane in your faith, maybe he can get you to waste your time. And maybe that's good enough for him. Don't let him steal your time. Be intentional. Be wise. Be a steward of your time. And choose to live intentionally and plan accordingly with your time. Let's do a quick review here. And then we'll close this out. Living intentionally does not mean that we're trying to control all the circumstances of our life. That's impossible. It means that we're trying to steward our life. Living intentionally does mean that we're trying to do things on purpose to further discover our purpose as it relates to our God-given purpose. You're not just waiting for the magic carpet ride to sweep you up into the things of God or His future for your life. Living intentionally means, it does mean, that we're trying to view time as a precious commodity and begin to plan accordingly. Here's the thing. At the end of the day, as I give you this advice to live intentionally, what we're trying to do, friend, is align ourselves with Romans 12.1, which says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Some translations say, which is your reasonable service. See, our attitude and our mindset here when we're talking about living intentionally is about saying, here I am, God. Here's my life. Here's my future. Here's my story. Please do with it as you will. Please accept my humble offering and sacrifice, which is surrendering my life to you fully and including living an intentional life in a way that brings glory to you, Lord. That's our heart posture here. We're not just looking at this as a self-help thing, right? We're not just trying to pursue personal success or get rich quick or um, get ahead in life or boast about how smart we become because of how intentional we are. No, we're talking about stewarding our lives because we do have a God-given purpose and we do have a short amount of time to do the things that God is asking of us. We're simply trying to give back to Christ who gave everything, everything for us. That's our heart posture here. I tried to get practical and, and as real as I can with you, but I had to end it on a spiritual note because ultimately, as practical as it is to live intentionally, it is extremely spiritual because what you do with your life matters, friend. It really does. Let me pray for you. Lord, I just thank you for every young adult under the sound of my voice right now who's watching this video, Father. Thank you that you've numbered the hairs on their head, that you've known them since their mother's womb, your word says, that you have these plans for them, Father God. I pray for fresh inspiration, fresh conviction, fresh passion, fresh focus for them to begin to see how they can steward their lives and live intentionally and not just let life happen to them. And as they walk out the rest of this year and into next year, I pray that you stir their hearts with the things that stir your heart, Lord. That's our heart's cry. I pray that every person would humbly surrender themselves to you, Father God, and every facet of their lives, their time, their resources, their relationships, Father, and you would use each one of them and cause each one of them to thrive as they intentionally map out plans and strategies for the, how they can use their time well and uh, trust you and not try to control every circumstance, but to, but to view time as a precious commodity, Lord, and to do things on purpose that will position them to grow, Father God. Thank you that you promised to be with them and to never forsake them, Lord. Help us 
by your Holy Spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you all for letting me speak into your life for a moment. I know I can come on a bit strong, but I just got to be me and I got to be real with you, but I don't take it lightly. Thank you for letting me speak into your life for a moment. Um, I hope that you got something out of this and I can't wait to see any or all of you in person at some point at a church service or maybe at a young adult gathering. We'll see you soon.